Uh, and so in the, the time that I have, how much time do I have? 15 minutes. I'm going to put a timer and maybe for 10, for 12. Um, I'm going to share with you all like what we think or what's in our on our docket, so to speak, uh, to get us over this this beta phase and finally to a version 1.0 of the the database. Um, Lily, are you going to record this? It's currently recording to the oh. cloud. Perfect. So here we go. Share and. All right, so getting FabNet from beta to 1.0. Uh, again, I think we're going to see this slide several, several times. Um, FabNet's in beta. We started the project in the summer of 2018. Um, and unfortunately, you know, along with everything else that happened during the pandemic, uh, we it did uh, delay our original launch date, which was fine. Uh, we survived. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Um, the website then beta launched in September of 2021, and uh, then we've been engaging in community workshops, right, trying to get feedback from the community, understand needs, uh, so that we're able to build something that um, is useful and has value uh, for the community. Uh, and then again, reminding you the goals of the workshop, sharing the vision and goals, build community, and also generate feedback for improved features. Uh, and so what is this going to look like uh, getting FathomNet from beta to 1.0? So I'm going to subdivide this information um, uh, as planned activities versus pending activities. And when I, when I mean pending activities, that is pending uh, contributions and feedback from, from you all, from the community. Uh, and so to start, I just wanted to, to, to go through some of the, the, the um, the planned activities. Uh, I, I can't say that the publication was necessarily planned. Thankfully, our reviewers were happy with our paper and it was published in September of last year. Uh, if you haven't taken a look, um, you know, it, it's it's downloadable. I think it's um, you know, open access uh, from scientific reports. Uh, I think when we when we published the paper, we were we're all like, you know, it's a it's a database paper. It's not going to get a lot of attention, but we've been really uh, surprised at the number of accesses. So over five thousand people have downloaded the paper, um, and then there's this thing called altmetric, which is a, another way to measure engagement uh, or you know interest around a particular publication. And we're amazed. I think I checked these numbers last week, February 17th, that uh, the article is in the 99th percentile of 400 plus thousand tracked articles of a similar age in all journals. So it's generated a lot of interest, whether people actually, you know, use it <laughs> is another thing. Um, and we, you know, if you look at the demographics, the people that were tweeting about the, the paper is from all over the world. Um, of course, we need better coverage in other areas. Um, and then we also got a lot of uh, news uh, coverage and features on, on the paper as well. So um, really, you know, thank you to the community for your interest, because uh, this is the reason why I think it's gotten, um, you know, so much uh, widespread downloads and, and um, discussion. So next step, what we're also going to be focusing on is benchmark, benchmarking generalized use cases. Um, and so some of the use cases that we've identified based on conversations with the community, um, conversations with some of our collaborators, mm -hmm. is that there's, there's definitely a number of models that the community needs and wants. And if we create, um, you know, data opportunities to aggregate data like we're um, trying to Connie, really quickly, the, I think the slides that you're trying to show aren't quite loading we're just seeing your uh like keynote it's app it's not in presentation mode yeah oh 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 you guys are so nice nobody said anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay let me share that again oh and then you're missing my my lovely i worked so hard on these slides Here i know the, the world has to see them <laughs> thank you lily <laughs> Uh, see, look at that wonderful animation. Are, are you guys seeing the animations now? Yes. yes. Perfect. We're going to go through this anyway, because I did spend a lot of time putting this together. <laughs> 
Uh, so FathomNet website, uh, sorry, FathomNet paper, scientific reports, the number of accessions, uh, 99th percentile in 400, and over 400,000 tracked articles of a similar age in all journals. So um, we're excited about the, the, the potential interests. Um, and of course, we're wanting to work with you all to, to make sure we, we continue growing um, and, and generating more. And so the next effort that we're, our group is involved in is benchmarking generalized use cases. Some of those use cases involve things like uh, training a megalodon detector or meg detector. The idea that using data on FathomNet, we could provide a model just for object detection, less, less focused on uh, the classes, right, that are being output, but as a way for us to help quickly identify or, or quickly um, detect objects in imagery that um, may be uploaded to FathomNet, for example. Uh, another um, uh, potential benchmarked model that we're we're looking at is a midwater supercategory animal object detector. So, you know, the idea that you can, you know, there's you, instead of focusing on species or genus level level animals or concepts, we can instead come up with supercategories that describe either midwater or or benthic animals. Uh, and we've actually already uploaded the benthic supercategory object detector to the model zoo. Um, I believe we also have one for midwater animals, or I think that's in process, but basically expect to see, you know, these models benchmarked over time and updated over time as more and more data gets uh, um, added to FathomNet. Uh, and then finally, this is something we haven't done yet, but uh, based on conversations with a lot of ecologists, uh, people who are doing environmental assessments of you know, deep sea or benthic environments, um, this idea of having an object detector that allows you to distinguish between objects that are members of a vulnerable marine ecosystem versus not is, is really important. And so what we're going to try and do um, is again, uh, create these models, train these models, and then make them more widely available to the community. And of course, if you have any other ideas for models that we should consider, um, you know, please do let us know. And one of the ways in which we're, we're trying to do this or trying to use this is, um, you know, uh, creating these models, having setting them up on a, a model server, for example. And we've, we've already done that with, I believe the uh, Benthic supercategory detector. Uh, and it's actually the model server that we're using uh, for the FathomNet bot um, that Kevin set up on Twitter. So what you can do is you can basically point the server to a particular image. It'll run that algorithm on that image and then uh, generate predictions. Uh, and actually in using it in this way, you know, sometimes we're totally accurate. As you see here, we've been able to detect equipment. Uh, but then other times, right, this completely fails and, well, it doesn't completely fail. I do think this looks like a vampire squid, but that's a whole nother conversation. But this is something fun that we've decided to set up. Um, but besides the fun part, uh, what we're also evaluating is whether or not we should use this model server to um, evaluate all data that winds up being contributed to FathomNet. And one of the metrics that we're, we're trying to track is coverage. So like how much of an image is um, you know is localized and how much of it hasn't um, been localized. So like in this case, green indicates um, you know the overlap between labels that have been submitted versus uh, concepts that have been identified using the uh, model server. Uh, and so you know you see there on the top left the 100% coverage and how much of of the objects that are in the image have um, been missed by the machine learning algorithm. And you know you could do this on midwater animals, but where I think you're going to see a big benefit is going to be in these benthic images, right? Where green again indicates overlap between the uploaded uh, labels versus the um, the model server itself, and you can see there's a lot of gaps in in the, the submitted data. Um, and this is especially true when you know you've got situations like these with lots of different coral or lots and lots of different urchins. So we're not sure yet how we want to implement that, but that is something that we've been discussing as part of our group. Um, so that means, you know, we've already trained the Megalodon detector. We've got the FathomNet Twitter bot up and running. Uh, and then one of the things we're trying to evaluate in the next couple of months is how would we incorporate this into uh, FathomNet itself um, as part of the upload process. Uh, something that we're really excited about is that we did finalize a, a NOAA data agreement in November of last year. 
Uh, and what that means is that ANOAA has offered to host for free data that are submitted to FathomNet, um, especially if they want to make their data public. Uh, and the duration of that uh, hosting service is up to 75 years. So this is a, a significant contribution. Um, you know, that means if, if you don't have the institutional capacity um, or, you know, the, the time, um, we uh, can help facilitate that. And Brian, along with Megan Cromwell at NOAA right now, are working through what those data pipelines will look like. And our goal is to be able to have that implemented before uh, we release version one of the database. And I think a really important piece to this besides hosting data is that as part of the agreement, NOAA will uh, generate DOIs for data contributions. So that you will get attribution for you know, any, any of your contributions to the database woefully not enough time. So basically this is, you know, the upload page, uh, instead of just uploading a CSV file with to uh, pointing to the URLs where the images live, you can then uh, upload a zip file that contains imagery as well as a CSV file that um, provides metadata uh, information. And so the other thing is a DOI for contributions. So I think that's everything for planned. Now let's go to pending. Uh, so, okay, okay, right now we're in the Fathomnet workshop part two, um, and we've been continuously gathering feedback uh, for Fathomnet, and we hope to be doing this, uh, you know, and, and get feedback and, and more contributions from this group here uh, with the goal of defining uh, development tasks and laying out a timeline so that we can get to 1.0. Uh, then the idea is that after we go through that process, we can implement prioritized features that will then um, exist. So in almost no time, let's see. I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take the time I need. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna share with you guys a prototype of uh, the features that we're working on right now. Um, so I hope you guys are seeing uh, the FathomNet web prototype. Um, what I'm sh hopefully showing you is a new dashboard that we are trying to implement or have based on feedback that we've received. Uh, so the idea is that you can go to latest activity, so dashboard and latest activity, and scroll down. And what you'll see here are basically you know, notifications that alert you to uh, changes in topics or uh, you know, concepts that you're interested in following. If it looks a lot like uh, you know, a social media feed for you, uh, there's a reason. It's almost like we're making a social media feed for, for marine scientists. But basically what you're able to do is select uh, topics of interest, either by using a keyword search or um, using places. And the idea then is you can select these things, people and institutions even, to follow them and get notifications when you know, a new concept or a new, um, new location has uh, information added to it. Uh, and so um, you know, that could be either a concept itself, places, or people and institutions. Um, another big ask or request was you know trying to incorporate more information about who you are so other people can see you know what your your um, your expertise is um, and so one of the things that we've created is a you know a my account page where you can you know uh, add a profile image also we're creating these things called badges uh, so as a fun way to kind of gamify your contributions so everybody is part of these workshops. If you do establish your FathomNet account now, you will get an early adopter badge. Um, and over time, what we're going to be doing is, is generate badges for, let's say, GitHub contributions. Uh, so this is a work in progress, obviously, but these are this is one way in which we can create engagement. Uh, you'll also be able to see kind of what permissions you've been allowed within the, the database itself. Um, a big thing is adding an ORCID uh, because, right, we want to be able to add this information to the DOIs that are being uh, generated for the database so that you get um, attribution. And then a big field for your, your bio so you can mention things like, you know, different animals you specialize in, where have you maybe been training, etc. Uh, and then social media handles because, you know, of course, everybody uh, wants to talk in other places. Uh, so that is 
that. And then the community pages, this is where um, we've got a lot of, of new features that are rolling in. Uh, one of the things that was a big request was uh, a very straightforward way to display what your contributions are to the database or to FathomNet um, so that, you know, you can easily print a page, export that page, and perhaps include it in your performance reviews or your evaluation materials, right, to, to make it clear how much you've been contributing to this project. So, you know, your name, the number of uploads, the number of annotations, the number of models that you've been contributing, these are all things that we will be trying to track within FathomNet, uh, and then also displaying the activity of that particular person. And so the idea is to not only have a page for a particular member of the community, but also institutions that are playing an important role in, in generating and, and sharing that data. Uh, the other thing that we are implementing, or we'd like to implement, but I don't think we're going to be doing this right off the bat, or at least um, at, at, at um, version one, is uh, creating leaderboards so that we can see, you know, who are the top op uploaders, the top annotators, uh, the top verifiers, or the top programmers, right? And so these are things that we would love to incorporate into Fathomnet as another fun way to engage people. Um, and then... Finally, oh, this is important, collaboration. So I know this is something that we'll be talking about a little bit further in the brainstorming discussions, but one of the important pieces for this is, you know, in situations where there might be some uncertainty of, you know, the object or the concept that's been uh, localized or identified, what we're trying to do is create mechanisms for people to, um, you know, look at the history of, of the ID be able to reveal uh, who has identified things or verified it, and also add comments in terms of, you know, why might, you know, one person evaluate an animal as, let's say, like Nagalma versus just assigning a, a more general name like um, Fizenect. So um, this is an important piece. Obviously, it shows uh, verification, um, et cetera. So this is this is something. These are all features that we've worked heavily on. Um, you know, and I think our web designer has been doing a fantastic job of incorporating this feedback. And uh, during the brainstorming sessions, you know, you all will be able to look at this uh, in more detail if if you so desire. Uh, and so finally, my last bit. Um, is, you know, once we get all this done, right, once we agree on what these prioritized features are, we will implement um, hopefully uh, 1.0 before the start of summer. And so if we look at this entire thing, right, lots of planned and lots of pending activities, uh, you know, we're, we may be seeking volunteers, I don't know, but there's a lot, um, there's a lot to do. Uh, and so with that, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have about the content I just shared. Not too late. Who is moderating? <laughs> Are there any questions? Thank you, Alba. <laughs> We, we do like compliments, but uh, it's nice to hear you say that. Uh, so I think Tushar, you have a question. What measurement would top programmer hypothetically measure? The number of GitHub push requests. Uh, so that that is something that we've been looking at a lot because uh, you know there are badge systems already in place within GitHub. And so that's something that we're trying to evaluate if, if there's a way for us to pull those, those badges or those statistics into the Fathomet database itself. Um, so that is something we're looking into. We're not sure yet. Um, you know, these badge distinctions can get pretty complicated really fast. Um, but what we're doing is we're just starting, I think, with with at least the model contributions. And I think that will change over time. Great. Um, love the badge idea. OK, good. You know, badges were interesting. We weren't really sure about it. But more and more we've talked about it, people really uh, seem to like it. 
Uh, so Janet, what tasks would volunteers be completing? So that is a really great question. And that is actually something that I will probably be addressing in the, the future of FathomNet discussion, because we've often had that happen where, you know, enthusiasts want to participate right away, want to contribute right away. And of course, you know, FathomNet being the, this, you know, labeled data set, we're trying to figure out how do, how do we incorporate their knowledge and their expertise? Um, and then also something that's, I think, going to be a subject of discussion during the marine scientist brainstorming discussion is like, how do you onboard people and give them, um, uh, you know, access to or responsibility for verifying data? Like, how do you define who is, quote unquote, an expert? And so these are these are all conversations we're trying to have, but we are creating a mechanism for volunteers uh, to participate directly in, in these workflows. So I'll talk about that um, towards the end of today. I'm signing up right now. Badge envy. See, it's it's badges, man. All right. I'm happy to take one more question, but I know we are going into our break. Okay. All right, let's break. So what, oh, Ari. Suggestion for potential models are low-hanging fruit, live coral cover and macroalgae cover and seagrass. Uh, Long-term monitoring indicators identified as part of national programs. That's great to know. Ari, we'll, um, maybe if you, there's a link that you can send us to uh, maybe that community definition, then we can also take a look. Okay, so finding the agenda. So we are supposed to be on a break and coming back at 1645, which is about seven, six minutes away. So no NFTs. <laughs> so let's, let's break and come back in, in five minutes. <laughs> 